Hello guys, welcome to today's webinar series. Today we are going to have a discussion on the three ages of British literature that is Enlightenment age, Romantic age and Victorian age. And the question is why these three ages? And the answer is because these are the three ages that brought a great or rapid change in British literature. The British literature before the Enlightenment age and after the Victorian age are extremely different. And these are the three different, these are the three ages that brought many different changes in English literature. Okay, so the first age is the Enlightenment age and in the previous uh, videos of our uh, Applebee's sessions, we were discussed about the Anglo-Saxon literature and the Anglo-Norman literature moving to the age of revival, then the Elizabethan age, Jacobian age, Civil War, Carolyn age, and then uh, we have reached Elizabethan age. So you can go through the detailed descriptions of the different writers who belong to both the three ages, that is the Enlightenment age, the Romantic age and the Victorian age. And and in today's session, I'm going to have, I'm going to give you a clear idea about the background information of all these writers or what made these changes, especially in English literature. So the first age that we are going to discuss is the Enlightenment age. Okay, so once again, I'm repeating in today's session, I'm going to give you an introduction to three ages, Enlightenment age, Romantic age and Victorian age. And the first session or the first, uh, let's divide it into three chapters. And the first chapter or the first session is Enlightenment Age. So as an introduction to Enlightenment Age, I want you to know that Enlightenment Age is also known as Augustine Age or the Age of Prose and Fiction. The Age of Prose and Fiction because this is actually the age in which prose and fiction or there is a rapid development in the area or in the genre of prose and fiction. It is also known as the age of reason and another important thing that you have to remember is that in the enlightenment age the most important feature or the central principle that underlies everything is humanism. So what do you mean by humanism? Humanism is the philosophy or humanism is the ideology that believes in an individual or that believes the that believes in the value of an individual or value of human beings either individually or collectively so that is what is called as humanism so in the enlightenment age you could uh, see that all the attention or all the concentration goes for an individual or goes for human being as a collective whole so that is why uh, we say that humanism is the central philosophy or the central ideology of the Enlightenment age. Another important uh, point that you have to remember about Enlightenment age is that it has got its emphasis on reason. So while we discuss about the next upcoming uh, ages, that is the Romantic age and Victorian age, you could see that there is often a constant clash or a constant uh, um, uh, difference between uh, religion and science or uh, logic and superstitious beliefs. So you could say that Enlightenment Age is the beginning of such a contrast or such a conflict between the religion and, and the science. And one of the main reason is that in the time of Enlightenment Age or during the Enlightenment Age, people, especially the philosophers, the writers, poets and so on, they gave more importance to reason because after the renaissance and after uh, the civil war people they wanted to mold themselves to much to uh, so they wanted to mold themselves to have peace they started to give importance to peace rather than uh, fighting or rather than um, in knighthood or war and so on they wanted to have a very peaceful life after all the civil war and the all the other battles so you could say that they started to emphasize on reason rather than tradition and other conventional beliefs. And after the civil wars, poets and philosophers, they started to think of creating a model society because during the civil war, people started to or the, the thinkers and the philosophers, they started to have a feel that they started to think that it is actually the ideology or it is actually the thinking process of the people that should be changed in order to have a very peaceful life because the the very essence of civil war though it was to remove charles the first from the throne 
it actually affected the lives of the people because war is not something that could be that could be easily gone through so such types of situations have to be avoided in order for people to live in peace and happiness and therefore they decided to have or uh, they decided to mold society on the basis of values ethics and morals instead of all the traditional beliefs and conventional patterns moving on uh the chief among the the thinkers who wanted to mold the society or who wanted to write for the society so that the society could reform themselves were john locke the philosopher john locke as you all know is a philosopher and also a physician and his ideas have influenced the thought process of the agustinian age because john locke is actually the person who brought the idea of tabula rasa that means a person or a child is born with his mind like that of a tabula rasa that means a white paper and everything every uh, and what he and what is written on that paper or what is going to be written on that paper is based on his sense and also based on his experiences so it is the sense and it is the experience that marks that marks everything based on the based on an individual so that means what a man is born free if a man is born free he is out of every chain okay he is out of religion he is out of class he is out of caste he is out of society so it is this society that puts all these things into him or it is a society that molds a man so that is the idea of uh, john locke ruso and diderot so they all brought to into the they all brought the idea that man is born free and therefore again they gave importance to humanism where human beings are given uh, their attention or either as individually or as collectively moving on another important feature that you could find in the enlightenment age is the emphasis on skepticism especially with religion and superstition so before the time of renaissance or before the time of civil war you could say that uh if i if i am introduced to a superstitious belief or if i am introduced to a religion there is nothing called questioning them okay so i can't question them i blindly and simply follow them out of my tradition but here the thing is that uh, during this enlightenment age there was a great change in the attitude of the people against all those traditional and conventional things people started to uh people started to have a perspective people started to view religion and other superstitions or tradition with skepticism is it true should we follow it is there an another side for such a belief so such types of questions were frequently asked against religion and other traditional beliefs and another important feature is celebration of individualism celebration of individualism as i said earlier humanism was the central idea of enlightenment age and of course it will lead to the celebration of individualism that means i am happy with who i am i am not supposed to be the good man that the society wants me to be okay i can be a perfect man i should be given right okay so me getting my right is not someone's uh, what no not should uh, me getting my right is not something that should be given by others my right is often my right okay so that is actually the celebration of individualism and again as i said earlier this is a time where there was a great conflict between science and religion and also you have to remember that this is a time when people started to have a little faith in science okay and one of the main reason was isaac newton and his principal work that is principia mathematica was considered to be one of the or the first major enlightenment work because after or because isaac newton's works isaac newton's book and also his discovery of gravity actually inspired and influenced people and also made people believe in science so that okay so till then it was the, till then people they believed in religion they without questioning them but with the belief in science or when science came to the uh, platform people started to question everything okay people started to view everything with skepticism and thus it lead to a scientific revolution thus it lead to a scientific revolution 
and scientific revolution was very much important and very much needed for that society because the british society or the england culture was highly corrupted by all these pretentious traditional beliefs and patterns and with scientific revolution many illogical superstitions uh, and the other traditional beliefs were able to be eradicated and also there was an establishment of reason and logic okay there was an establishment of reason and logic and as i said earlier there were many philosophers and scientists who actually brought this scientific revolution and one among them was isaac newton and isaac newton and his discovery of gravity actually made people believe in science and again john locke who uh, introduced or who introduced the concept of empiricism or who believed in empiricism that everything should be proved or a man is born free he followed the idea of experience than inherent knowledge that questioned many beliefs of religion okay so that is about that are the, so these are the contributions of isaac newton and john locke and moving on to the literary uh, sphere many literary groups emerged in this period primarily based on shared political ideologies so um, uh so uh, you you have to remember i i hope you remember that in the civil war i have also already mentioned about the wigs and the uh, troy groups who uh, who came during that time supporting the monarchy and the parliament so here in enlightenment age you could find the uh, the, the rapid development in the case of periodicals and journals and one of the main reason was that these two groups they wanted to uh, showcase or they wanted to e express their ideologies and their beliefs especially based on political especially these political ideologies and when one group uh, produce one periodical in order to express them of course the opposite party would also have a temptation to start their own so in the enlightenment age you could see the beginning of periodicals and journals or news papers and that actually brought another uh, brought another development that is the development of prose writing or the development of periodicals they formed together as clubs coffee houses and groups so these clubs coffee houses and groups they shared a similar ideology they wrote for a same they wrote for the same periodical their ideas would be uh, same but the way of writing would be different and they engaged in publishing newspapers and magazines and prose which at many cases have led to letter wars so you could find that uh, a one writer writing for his party against another writer and of course he would write it in response and gradually this will become a letter war and in the enlightenment age you could find many such uh, letter letter wars letter wars okay so uh, in the enlightenment age i am going to explain you about the four important clubs that emerged during this time and the names of the important personalities who belong to this club so in our platform uh, i have already given uh, details uh, separate details or separate notes on each and every writers of the uh, of all the ages so you have to go through the um, go through the videos in order to know more so here i am giving you a brief introduction so the kit kat club the kit kat club was actually the uh, the work of the uh, the wick party and it was to establish the wick political objective so all the articles that uh, bel or all the members who belonged in the kit kat club they were wick supporters and the main objective of the kit kat club was to develop a strong parliament or to voice for a strong parliament a limited monarchy resistance to france and the protestant succession to the throne so these are the important uh, objectives of the kit kat club a strong parliament and a limited monarchy so this is actually the result of civil war where uh, in order to check the power of the ruler or in order to check the power of the king the parliament should always be a strong voice and therefore one of the major objective of the kit kat club was a strong parliament and a limited monarchy and also a resistance to france and the protestant succession to the throne and this club was there in prominence from 1690 
and uh, some of the important personalities who belong to the Kit Kat Club are William Congreve, John Locke, Sir John Van Brook, Joseph Edison, Richard Steele, and Jacob Johnson. So I have discussed about all these uh, writers in uh, in the in our chapter Enlightenment Day. So you have to go uh, into it for more references. And the next club is the uh, the Scribblerus Club. It was established in 1713. It was established in 1713. And the Scribblerus Club is also uh, an important club because it also included many important writers of that time, uh, especially like Jonathan Swift. And the group created the persona of Martinus Scribblerus through whose writings they accomplished their satirical aim. So they created this uh, persona called Martinus Scribblerus, and it is through this character that they often shot their satirical bombs or satirical guns, and this is actually the club. And the literary aims of the club called Scribblerinism were followed up in works like Gulliver's Travel, The Denziad, and Tristram Shandy, and also the the the, the uh, the members of the Scribblers Club are also very important. That is Jonathan Swift, Alexander Pope, John Gay, John Arbuthnot, Henry St. John and Thomas Parnell. So I have given uh, detailed information about Swift, Pope, Gay and Arbuthnot in the uh, in the online session. So you have to go through it for more uh, view So um, uh, to have a more reference. And so we have Jonathan Swift, Alexander Pope, John Gay, John Arbuthnot, Henry St. John and Thomas Parnell. So these are some of the important writers who belong to the Scribblerus Club. And then we have another important writing that is the blue stock, sorry, another important group called the blue stockings. The blue stockings. It is an informal women's social and educational movement. So you have to remember this uh, name, blue stocking, because it is actually a feministic group. It's a feminist group which has got an informal women's social and educational movement. The society emphasized education and mutual cooperation. So this is actually a group that uh, that uh, speaks or that So Johnson Circle, Johnson Circle is uh, of originally of nine members and members supported one another introducing a range of publications in the field of aesthetics, philosophy, history. So Johnson Circle was actually important because that was not just limited to literature or a political party, but it was there in the field of aesthetics, philosophy, history, museology, biography and botany. And uh, and the, uh, since it actually involved a vast number of groups, the members supported one another, introducing a range of publications. So you could find a range of publications in Johnson Circle. 
and some of the important members of this group are Joshua Reynolds, Oliver Goldsmith, David Garrick, Adam Smith, Edmund Burke and James Boswell. Joshua Reynolds, Oliver Goldsmith, David Garrick, Adam Smith, Edmund Burke and James Boswell. And so that's all about the Enlightenment age. So in the first section, we discussed about the Enlightenment age. We discussed about the important features and the important ideologies, principles and philosophies that ruled or that were prominent during the Enlightenment age. Then we discussed about the, the clubs or the groups that were that were prominent during the uh, Enlightenment age, especially the four groups. And now I want you to remember the names of these groups and also the important members of the groups and all also the objectives of these groups. So now moving on. Romantic age dates back to the uh, late 19th, I mean late 18th century. So in the second section, we are going to have a look on the introduction, background and also the features of romantic age in British literature. So the first thing about British uh, Romantic Age is that it is an artistic, literary, musical and intellectual movement. So I want you to remember that this is not a romantic movement is not a movement just limited to the sphere of literature. But at the same time, it is an artistic, musical and also an intellectual movement. It originated in Europe towards the end of the 18th century. And it was at its peak in the period from 1800 to 1850. That is why I roughly estimated romantic age from 1800 to 1850. And the movement was rooted in the German Sturm and Drag movement. Okay, so these are some of the important details of the Romantic Age. It is an artistic, literary, musical and intellectual movement. It originated in Europe towards the end of the 18th century, was at its peak in the period from 1800 to 1850. The movement was rooted in the German Sturm and Drag movement. And you have to remember that Romantic Age or the Romantic period was not something that uh, evolved overnight, but it actually evolved as a reaction to many things that happened during the happened towards the end of the Enlightenment Age. Or you could find, or you could say that uh, Romantic Age is actually the result of the thinking of the Romantic Age. And it was partly a reaction to many things. And the main uh, four things are Industrial Revolution, French Revolution, Age of Enlightenment, and Scientific Rationalization. So these are the four major events that, uh, that called for a Romantic Revival. And that is Industrial Revolution, French Revolution, Age of Enlightenment, and Scientific Rationalization. So the first important thing is French Revolution. French Revolution, it happened along with American Revolution. So I hope you have heard of French Revolution in your history chapters. So about French Revolution is also very important from uh, a literary point of view because it happened along with American Revolution. And French Revolution is very much important because it is this revolution that brought the ideology of freedom, equality and liberty or liberty, equality and fraternity. It actually brought an idea into the mind of people that everyone is equal. A man or a person cannot be separated just because he belongs to another class. Everyone has got an equality or everyone should get this con or everyone should get the rights of freedom, liberty and equality because this is the right of every human being. So such a change or such a perspective has brought a great change to the literature and also to the people because it, it is actually the time where you could see that people started to give more importance to class distinctions. And at the same time, you can also find a group of people who wanted to eradicate this class distinctions. So the aim of French Revolution was to overthrow the power of monarchy and to spread the idea of freedom and liberty. It also has the ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity. 
it questioned the divine right of the crown and the amount of money spent by the royal people so if the crown gets a power that means uh, uh, the aristocratic people or the royal people all are utilizing their power and even when the lower class people or the people who belongs to the lower strands of the society are suffering there is no much difference in the life of the royal people so that actually brought a brought a great rebellion and that was one of the major reason of the french revolution and revolution was not a complete success as the end of monarchy led to a military reign so from one power it moved on to another power so we couldn't say that french revolution was a complete uh, success but the thing is that french revolution has brought a great change into the minds of the people and the second important feature that you have to remember about the romantic age is the uh, industrial revolution so as i said earlier romantic age is a response to french revolution and the second one is industrial revolution industrial revolution is marked with the transition to new manufacturing process in european europe and the united states and this transition included going from hand production methods to machine so industrial revolution actually arise as a result or or as a response to the development of machines and machinery in factories and industries for example uh, if we take an example of an industry or a factory that produces uh, candles then you okay or toys earlier these toys were handmade or handcrafted and therefore the it was the artist who got the importance who got the value but when it came to machine every toys actually look the same and therefore the important never goes to any particular person or that or, or there is now no one called a true artist uh, behind this toy okay so the so there you could find that from a person as an individual the transition or you could find a transition from the value of an individual to the value of something that is very materialistic so that that is what called for the industrial revolution the development of machine tools and the rise of mechanized factory system with the rise of population transportation machines housing industries and roads pollution death unemployment and poverty also increased and romantic age so with this development of industries factories and so on and, and transportation so with the development of science and technology there was another side where people had to suffer from poverty from unemployment and also from death pollution uh, pollution and so on because okay so if there is a hill of course there will be uh, or if you are climbing a hill there would be another side for it just like how a coin has two sides so here also you could find that with all the rising things there was also something that is actually declining and it affected people from all levels there were poverty there were unemployment there were uh, sickness because industrial revolution uh, industrial growth actually called for urban areas and slums again uh, moving to uh, health issues and so on and uh, and then at the same time so people started to give more importance to humanity and nature because this is actually the time where people felt that with all this industrial revolution and french revolution people are becoming more and more materialistic so their lives are uh, very much uh, narrowed down to a narrowed down to uh, to uh, within a within the four walls and it was only nature that could give them some sort of relief or some sort of consolation and the so the nature was uh, nature started to get treated like treated with admiration and with respect and romantic writers they revived nature through their writings romantic age has brought many influences like so now we are going to have a look on some of the uh, influences of romantic age population increase and migration joint stock companies and banks colonization and exportation cotton industry steam engine and child labor so now moving on to the literary characteristics so so far we discussed about the background details or background information of the romantic age and now we are moving on to the literary features of the romantic age so in the previous slide i have mentioned that romantic writers they revived nature through their writings 
so some of the important literary characters that you could find in uh, romantic age are the the free expression of the feelings of the artist you might have heard of the definition of poetry uh, by william wordsworth that poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings recollected in tranquility so that means you could write anything because it is my feeling okay so the free expression of the feelings of the artist uh, if if the uh, if the artist is uh, feeling sad or if the artist is feeling uh, an ecstasy he could write it freely without any restriction so importance were given more to emotions and feelings and uh, expressions rather than for a rather than uh, for plot or themes the poets place their importance on emotions and another important thing that got importance during the romantic age or one of the important literary features that you have to remember from romantic age is the importance of imagination because all the romantic writers they believed in the power of imaginations because they believed that it is only through this imagination that these feelings could be freely expressed or uh, could reach the minds of the readers and the next important feature is a strong belief and interest in the importance of nature as i said earlier these writers they revived nature in their works and they admired they treated nature with respect because they considered nature to be the only way of consolation or only way of their uh, final relief and the effect of nature upon the artist when he is surrounded by it preferably alone so rather than uh, explaining about the beauty of nature in romantic writers you could find that they are writing about the effect of nature on them okay or the uh, effect that or the love or the what they go through when they are close to nature they were in contrast to the social art of enlightenment age because in the enlightenment age i have uh, i have mentioned that it was the importance was given to human beings as an individual or as a collective uh, or as collectively so here it is not for human beings but it is for nature that they gave importance and they tended to believe a close connection with nature was mentally and morally healthy and th that was another advice that these writers the writers tried to give to the next generation that if you are try if you are getting close to nature you would be more mentally and spiritually and also morally healthy and uh, coming back to the uh, literary features in the writings of the romantic writers like wordsworth coleridge or jane austen walter scott you could find that they have used very plain and uh, simple language and anyone could anyone with a little uh, knowledge on english could easily understand them and also an emphasis of nature and idealization of human nature and individualization superstitions and supernatural elements imagination and impersonality and also free words these are some of the important uh, facts or important points of the important literary features and in the romantic age i want you to remember some of the notable facts that is edmund burke's reflections on the revolution in france provoked two famous responses that is thomas paine's rights of man and mary wollstonecraft's a vindication of the rights of man so uh, these are some of the important titles that you have to remember because this actually shaped uh, the romantic age and then we have william wordsworth and robert southey who planned to establish a utopian community based on the egalitarian ideals of revolution which they called pandisocracy which means equal government by and for all equal government by and for all and then we have lord byron who rebelled against the authority and opposed all forms of tyranny so this is uh, this, okay so in all these romantic writers you could find that they are actually moving against something that could control them they wanted something uh, free or they wanted equality or they wanted a liberty in which they could express themselves that is why you could find in the works of romantic writers uh, the free expression of their feelings and again coming to the area of economics we have adam smith who's writing wealth of nation who inaugurated the trend of free market economics and another important fact that affected the life of the romantic age was the peter lumazaga so in the works of keats and shelley you could find these writings again find find this influence again and again 
So on 16th August 1819, 60,000 people assembled in St. Peter's Field in Manchester for a peaceful open reform. The crowd was forcibly dispersed and it is lamented in Shelley's poem, England 1819. So this is another periodical uh, of the time of the Romantic age, that is the examiner and uh, the contributors were the famous Romantic writers, that is Byron, Shelley, Keats and uh, Hazlitt. And you have to remember that the examiner was actually a very famous uh, periodical, sorry, very famous newspaper. And it actually was the from 1808 to 1886. So it was very successful and it was started by Leigh Hunt and his brother John Hunt. And another important uh, work of this, or another important newspaper of this time was Edinburgh Review. Edinburgh Review was there on prominence from 1802 to 1929. So it was over for a century. And uh, it was a big newspaper and it was a rival of Quarterly Review. It attacked Lake Poets, especially Wordsworth. And the Quarterly Review. Quarterly Review was a Tory newspaper, as I said in the previous, uh, previous, uh, uh, I mean previous slide, that there was a war of lectures or there was a war of writings between these political parties. It was published by John Murray. John Gibson Lockhart was a famous editor in Quarterly Review. And then we have Blackwood's Magazine, which is again a Tory magazine. And you have to remember Blackwood's Magazine because in that, John Wilson, he had written under the pseudonym Christopher North. He was one of the principal writer of this work, Blackwood's Magazine. And this work is important because it unjustly attacked Keats and uh, Hazlitt and Leigh Hunt as the Cockney School. So the title Cockney School. Okay, so that is all about the Romantic Age. So, so far in the first two sections, we discussed about Enlightenment Age, the literary features of the Enlightenment Age and the major principles and ideologies of that time. And then we moved on to the Romantic Age and then we discussed about the important facts of the Romantic Age. And finally, I'm introducing you to the Victorian Age. So, Victorian Age marks from 1837 to 1901 because this is actually the period of Queen Victoria or you could say that this is actually the reign of Queen Victoria. So of course Victorian age it was preceded by Romantic age and followed by Edwardian era or you could find that Victorian age is actually a movement or it is actually uh, an initiation to modernism where people started to move away from all their uh, traditional beliefs and patterns or you could find that in all these ages in romantic age in victorian age and in the enlightenment age people had actually a tendency to move away from all the conventional patterns and beliefs and the culmination or the result is the modern age and therefore you could find that victorian age is the final uh, stage of that movement or that transition and Victorian age was marked by the rapid growth of novels. So in the Romantic age, we have the writers like uh, Jane Austen, who, ha who had written uh, just, like, just like the modern novels, where the protagonist or the characters are more close to real life. Okay, and where, he, where you would get an idea about the, uh, so, about the experiences or the lives and moving patterns or the life, uh, patterns of the common man. So in Victorian age, people or the writers gave more importance to novels and there was a uh, splendid growth or splendid development in the era of novels. And another important thing that you have to remember about uh, Victorian age is that in the, in the, during the period of Victorian age, Britain was considered to be one of the strongest powers in the world with all their colonial uh, exploitations and all their uh, industrial uh, powers. So, and it also had, it also won the war with France. It entered the, it emerged from the long war with France. And till that time, France was considered to be another strong power. And uh, when Britain emerged uh, with the fight of, with the fight with uh, France, it was treated with much respect and admiration. And even the people themselves got the confidence that they are the best civilized people in the world. And all the other countries, they, the people are just savage, or the people are just uh, uncultured or barbaric, barbaric barbarians. So this new status as the world's first urban and industrialized society was responsible for the extraordinary wealth, vitality and self-confidence of the period. And some of the literary features of this time were violent immoralism, 
class and status, conscious novels and characters, serialization, science versus religion, and nostalgia. So as I said earlier, there was a there, there were a group of people or people had a tendency to uh, fall away or to move away from all these concepts of morals values and ethics because because they started to believe in science and uh, this conflict between the science and religion actually questioned for the legitimacy of the ethics and values and then we also have class and status conscious novels for example if we read the work uh, Buddhering Heights you, know, you could get a clear cut idea about the class distinctions and how it shaped the ideologies and beliefs and, and the uh, even the lifestyle of the people during that time. And uh, with uh, Charles Dickens work, you could see that the another concept or another literary feature called the serialization of the works, giving importance to cliffhanger novels. OK, for example, one episode would be published in a magazine or in one periodical and uh, followed by the next the next episode in the next periodical. So the thing is named in, in the next edition. So such types of serialized works also became prominent during the Victorian age. And that actually opened for a new call. That means many people uh, or the, even the children. So uh, you, you might have heard that children actually waited for the works of Charles Dickens to be published so that the bigger people, I mean, uh, the people who sit in the coffee houses would read to the, uh, would read them to the illiterate children so that they could hear it so that actually gave more interest or people started to have an anticipation uh, in literary works and another important thing that you have to remember about the victorian age is utilitarianism the moral what do you mean by utilitarianism that is the moral value of an action that is whether an action is good or bad is determined by how it contributes to the happiness or pleasures of the people okay for example if i take a pencil or if i take this laptop the pleasure or the happiness it gives to me that that actually determines the moral value of this object or this action so the biggest contributors of the case of utilitarianism are jeremy bentham and john stuart mill and according to them an action is right if it gives you happiness and if it doesn't gives you happiness then the action is wrong then we have Darwinism, another important thing that influenced the writings of the Victorian age. So Darwinism is a theory of biological evolution developed by the English naturalist Charles Darwin. All species of organisms arise and develop through the natural selection of small inherited variations that increase the individual's ability to compete, survive and reproduce. Or you could say that these uh, the the survival of the fittest as Herbert Spencer named it. That means uh, this actually called, as I said earlier, this actually called for a society that gives value only to the people who give happiness or only to the, only to the people who are fit enough to survive. The, the life of the lower class or the life of the people who couldn't uh, contribute themselves or who uh, couldn't make a difference was considered to be very or they were all marginalized. So it was considered to be uh, very much uneconomical according to these concepts. Darwinism was used to study the struggle of the society to adapt to their class and status. This study brought many aspects to the study of literary text. And then we have another important literary movement that is realism. So realism and naturalism are some of are two important things that you have to remember in Victorian age. So realism is an attempt to represent subject matter truthfully, avoiding speculative fiction and supernatural elements. While we discussed about the romantic age in our videos, we have, for example, Walter Scott. As I mentioned, he was someone who contributed to the genre of historical novels and they talk about knighthood, they talk about historical facts and wars, but realism actually brought another perspective to the genre of novels where the protagonist were the, the, were, uh, the characters, they are all very common people with both good and bad characters and they are someone who can be relatable by the reader because he is, because this actually is a story that could happen to anywhere near us or it could be a story that could happen to us there is nothing fictitious in it or there is nothing pretentious in it but the only thing is that realism actually calls for very minute detailed explanation of the things 
the accurate detailed unembellished depiction of nature or of contemporary life literary realism attempts to represent familiar things as they are and realist authors they chose to depict everyday and banal activities and experiences and uh, for example if you read the works of uh, madam if, if you read the work madam bovary you would get an idea about the the the, the realistic features that means the author would give you an a very depict or very uh, accurate account of how she grew how she grew or, or the way in which she eats so such types of minute details the slow death of the uh, the protagonist so such types of very minute details are also very well explained and it was highly influenced by agustus comte's philosophy of positivism philosophy philosophy of positivism actually calls for scientific uh, verification or uh, or which is capable of logical or mathematical proof so this this is actually something that goes against this theism or uh, the concept of metaphysics so that is that that also influenced realism so realism is about the, the realistic features are the features that actually speaks about something that could happen in real so these are some of the features of the realistic novels that is realistic characters and settings comprehensive detail of every, about everyday occurrences plausible plot a story that could happen in your town real dialects of the area and natural everyday dialogues and also character development because the character of madam bovary at the beginning of the novel and at the end of the novel are extremely different you could find a great change for example if you take the work uh, sense and sensibility the the character of these two sisters it has it has got a great change or the was a you could find the transition of character or you could say that it's a character development and also importance in depicting social class it often addresses the social issues and another important feature of section we discussed about victorian age and i am repeating why i am this why we are giving a uh, or why uh, the introduction of background details of these three ages are important is because british literature has got a has got a relevance or it has got its uh, admiration during this three ages enlightenment age romantic age and victorian age in romantic age and in victorian age you could find that there are many writers poets prose writers uh, playwrights or philosophers and so on there are many people who contributed to literature uh, there are thinkers there are poets there are fiction writers there are dramatists there are prose writers, writers pamphleters so there are many important writers and in all for example if you consider the case of william shakespeare the plays of william shakespeare or the songs of william shakespeare can be studied or could be studied in isolated without having without giving any reference to the background details or any political issues but that is not the case of these three ages if you wanted to look the look at the works of these three these the writers of these three ages like william wordsworth uh, shelley Emily Brown Jane Austen so on so on so you have to know you have to have a background detail of these three ages and also for the previous net exams for very um, for many exams questions are asked from the background details of this age and also the chronological events are also very important so that's all for today's session thank you